Howdy doody buckaroonies and welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron. Over the weekend, I was working on a client project that I was in a bit of a time crunch on, and I sort of accidentally stumbled across a chain of only three plugins that make mastering really easy. Like, really easy, and I figured it would be good to share this with all of you. A fair word of warning before we begin, these plugins are definitely a bit more on the premium side of things. However, I figured it was a good time to make this video because with Black Friday on the way, I'm sure you'd be able to get these plugins for an absolute steal once these sales do start going live. That said, if you have any recommendations on alternatives for these plugins, feel free to share those down in the comments below. If you use these tips and you get your next track mastered and ready to release, be sure to check out my friends over at DistroKid. DistroKid is an online distribution platform that makes it incredibly simple to upload and share your music with the world on all of the major platforms in the known universe in only a couple of minutes. DistroKid has a ton of other tools that make promoting and releasing your music as an independent artist or creator insanely simple, and I think the best part of all, it's only 20 bucks a year for unlimited uploads. I've been using DistroKid myself basically ever since I started releasing music, and I have yet to find a competitor that is a worthy alternative. If you've got some music you're ready to share, be sure to check out my affiliate link down in the description below. You save 7%, you get your music out there to the world, and you help support your boy right here in the process so I can make more videos like this one. Here we are in the DAW with an example session. This is an ad spot I produced for a plugin release, and we're just gonna listen through just a little segment of it here, just so you can get an idea of what it sounds like before we apply any processing to it. Cool. So just some kind of modern, aggressive, bassy stuff, and it's just meant to be kind of loud and exciting because it's an ad. First up in the mastering chain here is PSP's Master Q2. This is a pretty ridiculous EQ plugin because it utilizes 80-bit floating point processing for the filters inside of it, which is pretty nutty, as the kids would say. I think I'm pretty confident in saying that this is the only plugin that does this, at least that I know of, making it probably one of the most precise EQs ever made. If you know any other plugins that utilize that kind of processing, please let me know in the comments. I would really love to check them out. So what is this thing doing? Master Q2 is a mastering EQ, as the name might imply. So I'm first off using it as a mastering EQ. I found the rough fundamental of everything going on here in the track and added just a little bit of a lift. I cleared out a little bit of mud. I added some energy around 1K. This makes the track poke out a little more, but it also makes it translate better to speakers on phones and other smaller devices just to make it feel a bit more energetic. And then just added a gentle high shelf lift here just to add a bit of air and nice crispy bits up top. If you take a look down here, one thing to note about mastering is that the adjustments are typically pretty small. Honestly, this low end boost is probably a little much. I'm actually gonna widen that out and just drop that down. In mixing, you might do pretty big adjustments of you know 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 dB or beyond, but when it comes to mastering EQ, you really wanna keep things pretty smooth and subtle. It's really just about nudging the sound into the right direction more than correcting the sound. This on its own actually works pretty well, and I'm just gonna back off all the other processing I'm doing with it here, just to give you a sense of what this is doing. So purely in EQ, this is what we're doing to the track. <laughs> Let's bypass it. So it's ultimately pretty subtle, and typically that's what you want with a mastering EQ. This just pushes the sound and levels things out a bit more where I would want it. Next up, I'm enabling the fat switch here, which is the frequency authentication technique, which is just quad oversampling, just to make sure everything is as precise and amazing sounding as it can be. I'm also enabling analog mode here. This impacts the character of the filters being used in the EQ. I find it just adds a bit more richness to the sound, and then I'm using these two things on the bottom here that are super handy, and I'm very glad that this plugin includes them because Master Q2 really goes beyond being just an EQ. It's actually a very flexible plugin, and it's almost kind of like a mastering channel strip in and of itself. 
First up, I'm going to bring in the stereo width control. This is an amazing stereo widening tool and is kind of a cheat code, I think, to make mixes and masters just feel huge. Typically, I like to set this somewhere between 105 up to 120. So let's go into the main section here and take a listen. I'm going to bump this up to 120. And instantly, just feels so much better. I think in this case that might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to drop this down to maybe about 110, and that should give us a nice wide sounding master. without being too over the top. Finally, here in the output section, I typically like to enable the soft saturation mode here. Doing a bit of soft clipping when you're mastering is a great way to enhance the perceived loudness of something by adding harmonics. It's just a great way to make things feel big and bad and aggressive without having to push things too hard or utilize too much dynamics processing that makes things just feel too flat and dead like you crush the life out of them. So with that, let's give this a play and see the final result using just Master Q2. Turn it off. Bring it back in. So we've opened things up, we've balanced things out a little bit, and it's starting to feel pretty good. Next up in the chain here, and actually the last thing on the processing side of this chain, is Boost from Ursa DSP. This is a combination of a true peak limiter and a maximizer compressor sort of deal that does a bunch of actually really useful stuff but makes it very easy to use and removes all the really technical stuff that you might find with mastering limiters. What I like to do with this is disable punch mode. Typically, I find just a little bit of drive goes a long way. Again, soft clipping just makes things sound a bit better. The input gain here, you can lift up, so I usually just kind of punch that in until things feel nice. Here in the center, we have the amount of boost. I find between 5 to 15% works well in most applications. And then the important thing here is the focus slider. Focus is basically how much it's going to also lift up the quiet stuff. It's kind of like OTT, and if you push it all the way up to full focus mode and crank the boost, it makes things insanely loud. So for mastering, we typically want to be a bit more subtle. I find setting this pretty much down to the bottom works best. Moving over here, the max gain, I usually set this down almost to zero and increase the stereo link just to balance out the left and right channels until things feel right. Look ahead and release, I set those by ear. You should probably do the same. And then finally, I have the output stage here set to minus one dB. Because this is a true peak limiter, this is minus one dB true peak, which is important for LUFS or LUFS, which is the loudness standard used across all the major streaming platforms. With that, dropping things down here back to zero and increasing the quality, we could do oversample with True Peak. We'll give this a play. And I'm just going to start bumping that up until it kisses the top of the limiter. Now we've got a nice, big, loud, aggressive mix. This is really not a CPU intensive plugin at all. It sounds phenomenally clean and just makes things loud really easily without being too technical and annoying to deal with. A little bit of boost really goes a long way. This is also really awesome to use in the mix. And at this point, we might honestly be a little bit too loud. And that's where this next plugin is going to come in handy. Last up in the chain here is M Loudness Analyzer from Melda Productions. This is actually a completely free plugin. And you should go download this along with the entire Melda free bundle right now because trust me, it's awesome. M Loudness Analyzer here is going to be useful for us to check our volume, make sure it's at a healthy level for streaming services. It's not going to be too loud, not going to be too quiet, and it's really useful for sound design as well. I really enjoy using this when I'm doing sound design work because typically clients want things at very specific target volume levels, and this is a fast and easy way to make sure I've got things where they need to be. So for the target here, I'm going to double click this and enter a value of minus 14 LUFs. That's going to be our target for most major streaming services and is typically a pretty safe number. With this all set up and ready to go, we're going to reset boost here to zero and we're going to start lifting this up until we hit an integrated level roughly about zero. That way we know we're right on target. So let's give this a play, go through the loudest portion of the track and start cranking the input of boost here until we get exactly where we need to be. <laughs> Ah. 
So we only need a couple of dB. A little too hot. Let's give that one more play. Reset that and give it one more go here from here. So we're pretty close. We could probably hit auto gain here. We see that's gonna drop it about half a dB. So let's drop this down half a dB. So let's just do maybe like 1.6. That should be close enough for all intents and purposes. And now we're all good. We can set the output back to zero if I can hit the right key there and we are done. One quick bonus free plugin here you should know about for mastering and for life in general is Signalizer. This is a multi-mode signal analysis tool, totally free, it's awesome. We have a vector scope, an oscilloscope, and a spectrum, tons of other controls. You can read more about it on the website. But basically the vector scope here, really handy to know if things are in phase and working for the master. I'm gonna give this a play and watch for all the low end content and make sure basically it's just going straight up and down. That way I know that things are nice and in phase and we're not gonna have any mono summing issues. <laughs> Cool, and that looks good enough for rock and roll for me. And there you have it, a chain of only three plugins that makes mastering pretty straightforward and pretty foolproof. If you wanna check out these plugins for yourself, you can check out the links down in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, and as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. <laughs>